Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Bamboo Dong and I'm a scientific affairs liaison at Manorini Silicon Biosystems. Today I'll be presenting our cell search technology and how it can be used to help increase our understanding of the vascular effects of COVID-19. At Manorini Silicon Biosystems, our expertise is rare cell analysis with single cell precision. We have an integrated workflow that allows researchers to enrich, enumerate, isolate, and recover rare cells from circulating tumor cells for liquid biopsy to circulating endothelial cells, which may shed new light on COVID-19. Over the past several months, researchers around the world have learned a lot about this disease. We now know that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, intercells through the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 can be found on the surface of many epithelial cells, notably organs like the lung, but it's also present in arterial and venous endothelial cells. What's scary is that a recent study shows evidence that SARS-CoV-2 may actually massively induce upregulation of ACE2, increasing the viral load potential and contributing to a variety of downstream effects. As we've increasingly seen, COVID-19 symptoms present in a myriad of ways that can affect much of the body. 10% of COVID-19 patients have been presenting with acute respiratory distress syndrome. It's largely caused by damage to the epithelial endothelial barrier of which COVID-19 targets both components. In fact, it's been suggested that the damaged and or activated endothelium actually contributes to the pro-inflammatory cascade that worsens respiratory distress in patients. Outside of respiratory symptoms, patients are also presenting with cardiovascular and renal symptoms. In some cases, patients only went to a doctor after experiencing cardiovascular symptoms. What's really sinister about this disease is that studies have been reporting significant numbers of patients who have lasting myocardial inflammation, even in patients who have no history of cardiovascular damage, and those who reported either mild or no COVID-19 symptoms. On top of that, up to 30% of patients may end up developing moderate to severe kidney injury. So looking further into renal and cardiac complications from COVID-19, we see that acute kidney injury develops in approximately 40 to 60% of patients admitted to the ICU. Of those, 20 to 30% will require renal replacement therapy, such as dialysis. And in fact, earlier in the year, during the first major spike of COVID cases, we were seeing critical shortages of dialysis machines. Meanwhile, studies have shown that 23 to 24% of COVID-19 patients develop acute heart failure, many of whom had no prior history of hypertension or cardiovascular disease. And again, while there are still a lot of unknowns about COVID-19, previous studies looking at kidney disease and cardiovascular events, especially in relation to circulating endothelial cells, indicate that there are other factors at play beyond just ACE2. Circulating endothelial cells, or CECs, are endothelial cells that have sloughed off from the lining of the vascular wall and into the bloodstream. They're typically present in most people to some degree, but sudden and significantly elevated CEC counts have been reported to be linked to cardiovascular events and may be reflective of pulmonary endothelial damage. It's even possible that an increase in CECs may even predict the extent of the activation of a pro-inflammatory cascade. A few studies have indicated that there are some cardiovascular and renal events that could potentially be monitored by CECs with just a few examples listed here on this slide. Um, if you're interested in checking out some of these papers in detail later, feel free to reach out for a list of citations. Uh, otherwise, a recording of this talk will be made available afterwards. One thing to note, especially as far as endothelial damage goes, is that 
patients with chronic kidney disease are actually at a much higher risk for serious cardiovascular events later on. In fact, the majority of patients with chronic kidney disease actually die of heart failure and heart attacks instead of progressing to end-stage renal disease. Even just focusing on cardiovascular events, one study that measured CECs in patients in the 48 hours following acute coronary syndromes indicated that significant increases of these CECs could potentially be predictive of major cardiovascular events and death within a year. So knowing what we know about COVID-19 and its potentially severe effects on kidney and cardiovascular health and the role that CECs can play in studying such events, there's value in studying these together. Based on the large body of work that's been done on monitoring CECs, we have a great ability to apply that technology to studying COVID-19. More research could shed some light on whether there is a potential for CECs to help understand COVID specific damage or monitor the risk of future renal or cardiac complications. The isolation and analysis of CECs could also help researchers better understand COVID pathogenesis um, and identify pathways affected by the virus, which could even pave the way for potential therapeutic targets. Over the past few months, there's been uh, a growing amount of work that specifically looks at the role that CECs can play in understanding the effects of COVID-19. Most recently, a study out of Ex-Marseille University showed that ICU patients had significantly higher levels of CECs than non-ICU COVID patients. This correlated with putative markers of disease severity as well as inflammatory cytokines. So how can the cell search help? For those unfamiliar with the system, the cell search technology was the first and only clinically validated FDA clear technology for the enumeration of circulating tumor cells from liquid biopsy. It's been extensively characterized and used in over 650 peer reviewed publications in the oncology space and it's that same expertise and experience that we bring to the study of circulating endothelial cells, which has already been used in over 30 peer reviewed studies. As an automated and highly validated system, it allows for the standardization of CEC enumeration. Using cell search, researchers also have the potential for downstream molecular analysis of CECs, which may also shed new light on COVID-19. To use the cell search system, blood is first collected into cell save preservative tubes, which stabilize cells for up to 72 hours at room temperature. After sample prep and centrifugation, cells are loaded onto the cell tracks auto prep system, which automatically prepares the sample. Endothelial cells are enriched for using anti CD146 ferrofluid nanoparticles and then further stained for easy identification. Once ready, the enriched sample is transferred and further incubated in the Magnus cartridge holder, which uses a magnet to pull the cells onto a single plane where they can be analyzed on the cell tracks analyzer. We have two research use only kits for cell search CECs. The cell search circulating endothelial cell kit is used for the enumeration and characterization of CECs while the circulating endothelial cell profile kit is intended to be used for further downstream processing. Let's take a look at the CEC kit first. It comes with everything you need to enrich and stain your cells, including an anti-CD105 PE antibody to identify endothelial cells, and an anti-CD45 APC antibody to identify white blood cells. The cell search also has an open FITSI channel which researchers can use for a user-defined antibody. The results from this protocol are given as the number of CECs per four milliliters of blood. This is an example of what you would see from the cell tracks analyzer. In order for a CEC result to be considered positive, it must be CD105 positive, DAPI positive, and CD45 negative. 
So let's take a look at a 2012 publication studying CECs in the context of myocardial infarction done at Scripps down in San Diego. The researchers enumerated CECs using the cell search CEC kit uh, from 99 patients, 55 patients with acute myocardial infarction and 44 healthy controls. They found that CEC counts were significantly inflated in patients with myocardial infarction compared to controls. Looking at the results from the analyzer, they also saw that the myocardial infarction patients were the only subject group whose CEC images contained more than three nuclei per image, indicating that multicellular and multinuclear clusters are specific for acute myocardial infarction. Using that open channel on the cell search, they were able to stain the cells for CD31 to rule out the possibility that the endothelial cells were bone marrow derived mesenchymal cells. And then separately, they also stained the cells for CD34 to rule out other cell types such as endothelial progenitor cells or activated T cells. Similar to the CEC kit, the CEC profile kit also uses ferro capture to enrich CD146 positive cells from whole blood, but the cells aren't stained, which allows researchers to use them for downstream applications. In a study published in 2017 from the same lab at Scripps, they took enriched CECs from patients with acute myocardial infarction and a control population and determined gene expression with microarray, which identified 11 candidate genes that could potentially be used as a molecular signature. So these are just some examples of how the study of CECs can potentially be used as a biomarker to study vascular dysfunction, but it's also been used in a variety of research areas pertaining to endothelial damage, kidney disease, and other applications. Uh, if you have any questions about how you can incorporate the enumeration of CECs into your COVID or vascular dysfunction research, please put your questions in the chat window or reach out to me via email. We also have a lab services as well, which can process your samples at our headquarters in Pennsylvania. And I am happy to provide more information about that as well. So thank you so much. And thank you for joining me today.